we're asked to find the limit of the sequence given by a sub n. Looking at the theorem below, if a sub n equals f of n, and the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l, then a sub n converges to l, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals l. So this theorem is telling us we determine the limit of a sequence the same way we determine the limit at infinity of a function. Instead of formally defining a function f of x, or f of n equals a sub n, we normally just let the formula for a sub n be equal to a function of n and determine the limit as n approaches infinity of f of n, which would be the quantity three n to the fourth minus two n squared divided by the quantity eight n to the sixth minus n cubed. And now there are several ways to determine limits at infinity. We'll take a look at two methods. We'll first use the general guidelines for finding limits at infinity of rational functions, which is to divide each term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator, or in our case, the highest power of n in the denominator, and then find the limit at infinity in the new form. So looking at just the denominator, notice how the highest power of n would be n to the sixth. So now we'll divide each term in the numerator and denominator by n to the sixth. So we'd have three n to the fourth divided by n to the sixth minus two n squared divided by n to the sixth all over eight n to the sixth divided by n to the sixth minus n to the third divided by n to the sixth. And now we simplify each fraction. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of three n to the fourth divided by n to the sixth would simplify to three over n to the second 2n squared divided by n to the sixth would simplify to two over n to the fourth. 8n to the sixth divided by n to the sixth would simplify to just eight. And n to the third divided by n to the sixth would simplify to one over n to the third. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of three divided by n squared minus two divided by n to the fourth all over eight minus one over n to the third. Notice for these three fractions, the numerators are constants, and the denominators contain either two, three, or four factors of n, which mean as n approaches infinity, the denominators increase without bound, and therefore all three fractions approach zero. The numerators are constants, and the denominators are increasing without bound, and therefore the fractions approach zero. And notice how the eight is not affected by n, and therefore this limit is equal to zero over eight, which equals zero, which tells us the sequence a sub n converges to zero. This means that as we generate more and more terms in the sequence using the formula a sub n, the value of the terms will approach zero. Before we look at this graphically though, let's also determine this original limit using the shortcut. So starting with the original limit, the shortcut involves determining the degree of the numerator and denominator. And notice how the degree of the numerator is four, the degree of the denominator is six. So notice here, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So using the shortcut method, our limit is case one, where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, and therefore the limit of the rational function is zero. If the degrees are equal, the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, the limit does not exist. So here, because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator using the shortcut method, we know the limit is equal to zero. This should make sense because if the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator, then the denominator is increasing faster than the numerator and therefore the values will approach zero. Before we go, let's look at the sequence graphically. Looking at this graph, each point represents one term in the sequence, where n is along the horizontal axis and a sub n is along the vertical axis. Notice, as we generate more and more terms using the formula a sub n, we can see the terms are approaching a value of zero, and therefore a sub n converges to zero. I hope you found this helpful.